What's good, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the very first episode of Pro and Bro Wrestling Podcast in the year 2020. We are your hosts. I'm Arnold Telegaarda. And I'm missing no days off, Fred Ross. A happy freaking new year. Episode 36 now. 36. We're about to beat WrestleMania. Does this count as season two? Season if two? It's a, if it's a new year? Man, call what you want, man. But the therapy goes on for yeah. me. The therapy session goes on. We end it with the both of us, mm-hmm. and we're starting 2020 with the both of us. Check me out with my... Ro- Romy Rome's got this for me. Check me out. Make sure I'm getting it in, Arnold. Oh, you got it in there, man. Wrestling out of Hawaii. One of my favorite hoodies, and yeah. Uh, what do we got on the uh, menu? Well, you know, before we kick off 2020, I feel like this episode is going to be a little bit of winding down what happened at the end of 2019. Because, you know, as we're speaking right now, it's only January 2nd. There hasn't been too much wrestling going on between today and yesterday. But um, this past week, I went to a WWE live show. Yes, and I was supposed to go too. At the Staples Center. Yeah. So uh, I went with some of my friends. And it was the first live show that I've been to ever since, uh, I, I told you earlier, ever since like 97, 98, because all the wrestling shows that I've been to has always been televised, like yeah. Raw or pay-per-views and all that. And I was really excited for this one because I just hear so many fun stories about live shows from you, yeah. you know, since the camera's not rolling, there's just more freedom more to do More freedom to things. flip people off. Yeah. Uh, I'm guilty of that. Yeah. So there was definitely a little bit of that going on. Um, You know, Dolph Ziggler super kicked an inflatable Santa Claus that was on the ramp. Oh, yes, yes. It was really cool, man, because I really felt like it was such a wholesome family show, the way they structured and everything. And this was the first show, the first wrestling show, uh, even WWE show that I went to that had an intermission Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, okay. It was yeah, four I mean, matches, and then they're like, all right, guys, time for intermission. I'm like, what? You got to sell merchandise, man. That's yeah. where you sell. That, that's where you make your money on the live events with the merchandise. So, yeah, they definitely got to have an intermission, man. Mm-hmm. It was uh, eight matches on the card. They broke it down to um, four and four. Uh, and the last match before the intermission, it was actually for the Universal Championship, mm. Triple Threat, The Fiend versus uh daniel bryan versus the miz that was like mm. a, that was a really good match uh people were chanting this is awesome mm. at the end of it anything with daniel bryan man sure i sure. feel like he's such a good worker that he can just create a fun moment for everyone Absolutely. the fiend was at his best mm. um but he didn't have he didn't have the head lantern he had his normal lantern with him did he come from the entrance the fiend yeah since it was an official match he came from the okay from the ramp okay um but yeah, main events was Baron Corbin versus Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. And Baron Corbin, you know, he did his part being the heel that mm-hmm. everyone booed. And oh, this was really fun too. I went with my friend's little nephews and they were eight and it's nine like, years old. It's like a Brady bunch of you guys. Yeah. Like nine of you guys. Yeah, nine, nine of us. And it was really cool to see their reaction because I feel like their reaction is what WWE wants. From their fans it was the perfect reaction like when roman reigns won they lost their they were just like their head exploded they're like ah and it got to the point where we had to stop them because after (laughs) after the match was over they they wanted to go inside the ring Uh, and we had to like but no no you can't you can't go in there oh if i was there if i was there it would have been a different story man because i would have got you guys there early to the building Uh and i would have said uh, these, this is my family. That's how anytime I bring guests back there, uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if you've ever heard me say, but this is my family right here. Appreciate uh, can, that. Man. Can they come in the ring? But never say never. Yeah, never say never. But it was, it was a fun night. But uh, something happened during that live show that made it to all the, you know, wrestling YouTube channels and all that. And that's uh, Kalisto being injured, unfortunately, uh-huh. against a tag match against the Revival. Are you sure he was injured? Yeah. I mean, we saw it right there and then. And well, uh, he grabbed his shoulder. I, it, yes, and also. Well, what was it? Off what move? What move? Did here's it the thing: you know? it happened so fast that okay, that the match abruptly ended, and I didn't even catch the exact move that he hurt himself in. Mm. So um, it was Kalisto, Kalisto and Lince Dorado, Dorado versus the Revival, and um, literally every, the match was going on, and I I had one sentence with my friend. <laughs> And I turned around and it was like one, two, three, ding, ding, ding. And we're like, wait, what? We just went down. And he was holding his shoulder like this. 
and um, you know all the oh, the EMT people. EMT people yeah, came yeah. out, made sure he was all right. Mm-hmm. I'm and sure there was a WWE trainer there on the spot sure. too. Um, yeah, a lot of new faces. So um, yeah, the, yeah, but everyone knew that it was uh, you know for real because the match ended so abruptly, so fast. Mm-hmm. And I think the Lucha House Party was actually supposed to go over because automatically the music played and it was the Lucha House Party. Mm. And it was the revival that went over, but the revival played it off well mm. by, um, you know, grabbing the mic, saying like, hey, like, we want to match. That's the raw music. Hit our music. Hit the top guys music. And yeah. Now, I wasn't there. Now, do you feel like the other matches might have went a little longer to fill some of that dead air? Or did they kind mm. of fill it with uh, the revival promo? Uh, No, I think everything was according to plan uh, because the matches felt like it was the way it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing felt like it was being stretched or um, one match went a little longer than it was supposed to. Um, Maybe when Kalisa got hurt, it was almost towards the end of the match anyways. Mm. Because it was a long, lengthy match for them. It didn't happen, you know, right in the beginning. It was almost... It was a good, like, maybe 10 minutes or so. Oh, okay. I thought you said the match started and you had a conversation, then the match ended abruptly. No, I'm saying, like, the way he got hurt uh, ended abruptly uh-huh. to the fact where, like, everything was going on, move, move, move. And I'm like, I turned around for one sentence mm-hmm. and I turned back around and it was like, one, two, three. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wait, what? There's no, like, big finish yeah, moment, yeah, you know? Yeah. But hopefully he's all right, man. That's kind of a bummer going into 2020 like that. Well, that's my boy. I'm definitely going to reach out to him. I had no idea. Uh, I was supposed to go to the show too to yeah. just see some friends because that morning I had ran into my boy Kofi Kingston. That's right. Uh, at my gym, and uh, I was working out, and I looked over, and I was like, "Damn, that looks like Kofi." Mm. He was walking over by the treadmills, and then I said to myself, "I gotta finish my workout. I can't just stop working out, yeah. and then like uh, get back into my workout." Sure. So I said, "Let me finish up," and then I went over to by the treadmills and we kind of met halfway and mm-hmm. I was like, oh my God, it is him, you know? So uh, he had gotten earlier that morning. Yeah. I think they might have been in Montreal or something like that. I see. I'm not sure, but he got in that morning and he was getting in a quick workout. I know how it is when you're on the road, you know? Sure. Fans come up to you. I always say hi to, not saying I'm a fan, but sure. I, you know, I always take time with people. Mm-hmm take a picture and all that stuff. Catch so up with them. Catch up with them. Uh, well, fans, I you know, I try to do the best I can to show my support. Sure. And just, you know, be a be a friend to them. You know? Yeah. So I know time is money, so I don't want to take up Kofi's time yeah. too much. So we were talking a little bit, mm. and I was telling him, I said, yeah, man, you know, uh, I still have a lot left in the tank. And uh, he even said, oh, have you talked to Cody? I said, no, I haven't talked to him. I, I, I don't have his number. And yeah. I, um, I, um, don't I've never met the young bucks you know Mm -hmm. so I keep saying that so (laughs) maybe I should just reach out to him you know yeah Uh, yeah and and just see what's up to see if there's opportunity but yeah Kofi was just cool you know regardless being on the road uh, you got to get that workout in health yeah. as well. So yeah, yeah, we got a money, sh- we we got a money shot. Mm-hmm. I said, boom, dropping that hate. Yep. Yeah, look who I ran into. Boom, dropping that hate with Kofi Kingston. So yeah, yeah he's doing well. And I told him, I said, man, uh, he, I think he said he signed on to do like ten episodes for his podcast. Oh, or or ten or twenty. Okay. Um. So they're like knocking them out and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. So I told Kobe, I said, "Yeah, man. Like I've been doing my podcast. Like, uh, we're on episode thirty-five now, uh, and or thirty-five or thirty-six. I said to mm-hmm. him, and um, and he's, oh yeah, that's cool. I was like, yeah, man. I feel like you know WWE's like watching what uh, guys on the outside are doing extra, yeah. to see what they can do. And, yeah. And he was just laughing. Uh. But yeah, it was good to see him. It was good to see him. And I, yeah. again, I wanted to go to the show, but I just, you know, I would say just because moves aren't being announced doesn't mean moves aren't being made. So, sure, sure. Uh, yeah, making moves is what I do. And it's, uh, I like how you mentioned the fact that, you know, now WWE is focusing on what works outside of the ring mm-hmm. because uh, Triple H and Shawn Michaels was actually a guest on Corey Graves After the Bell podcast. And they were talking, Triple H was talking about you know, these days at the performance center, not only are they training these wrestlers, but they're actually classes for them to uh, 
to set themselves up for when their career is over. Mm -hmm. So they have um, a class about finance. Oh yeah, they were doing that when I was there too. Were they? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, well, where if you maintain a certain GPA, they'll cover it. Oh great! You know? Oh so, wow, GPA. Uh, well, you whatever, guys have grades? No, well, whatever, like, let's say if you want to, like, Vicky Guerrero, for example, mm. she started doing her nursing school when she was on the road. Oh. So she would be taking online classes, and if you get all A's, then WWE will cover it. If you, I see. If you're failing, then, you know, they're sure, not going to cover that. So that's how she made that transition into uh, being a nurse. Yeah. And also, um, Triple, H also said, he, Triple H also said that they're uh, teaching these guys how to become content creators. So they yeah. become a brand themselves, and when their career's over, they can still be a part of this entertainment industry yeah. without being physical. Now, I didn't have that. I, I didn't have that content. I just, you know, it's either in you or it's not. Yeah. You know? And you just learn from my. You just learn from your experiences. You know. Uh, yeah. So yeah, like I said, one monkey don't stop no show. So mm -hmm. uh, I have to keep it moving, and that's why my whole block hate movement is right. so meaningful to me. Mm -hmm. I can still take WWE's, be a star um, platform, and use it for my own good mm -hmm. to do better. That's what it's all about, man. Yeah. It's just doing better. So um, yeah, that's good that um, you know WWE's a huge conglomerate. Mm -hmm. So. Um, the way the direction that they're going in now is is beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. So uh, they're in, oh, you know, unlike uh, well, I don't know him personally, but I feel like Triple H really has his pulse on what's going on with the rest of the world. He's absolutely. not just consumed with what's going on in WWE. He like he looks at what's trending, yes. what works, and all that. But you know, with uh, them teaching wrestlers how to become content creators. I hope that they give the Zach that they give Zach Ryder the respect that he deserves because he's oh, the gosh, one that started man. that. He Him should, and Matt Hardy actually. He, absolutely, they should be teaching classes. Yeah, they should absolutely positively be teaching classes. And I mean, Zach lives in Orlando, so why not? Yeah, why not? Yeah, like you have to. But you know, the thing with me is like anytime I do clinics at wrestling school, sometimes I tell the coach, "Don't, don't announce me." Because mm. if you announce me, people are just going to show up because they want to be around me. I, I want to work with people that are serious. That's you know, There's good, two different type of people. There are people, I've always said since day one, there are people that want to you know, do this for a you know, hobby, which is cool. Yeah. I respect those people. Then there are people that, that want to be able to do this as a career, mm -hmm. take care of their family, and just you know, be... Be on that end of the spectrum. Sure. So, uh, but you know, you got to respect those people that are grinding, you know, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. that's what I want to work with. I want to work with the people that want to do this as a career. Yeah. And later today, perfect example is uh, Ray Jazz, you know? Yes. So anytime I, I said it in a promo after the match, I said, at this point in my career, I'm looking to elevate people. Yeah. I'm going to get my shit in, mm -hmm. but I'm going to elevate people. And we'll, for the first time on Pro Wrestling, just like we did on your YouTube channel yeah. <laughs> uh, with the, uh, the K-pop BTS with video. With the K-pop BTS, we're yeah. going to kind of go through uh, why I did what I did. Because just like Jake Atlas over a year ago, mm. I, I, I constructed that story from A to Z yes. on what people would bite on. Uh, and why I did what I did. So right. uh, we're, we're going to be able to, to talk about it and uh, get into it. You yeah. Know? Mm -hmm. About Ray Jazz and I and mm -hmm. why I did what I did. You know, kind of like, uh, I'm sure WWE Network, do they have like something where the guys uh, oh, yeah. watch, the f uh, watch uh, did Road Dog do something like that? Yeah, but um, that started in 2002, actually. Uh, Shawn Michaels, uh, 2004, Shawn Michaels sat down with Kevin Nash mm. and they rewatched their uh, Survivor Series match with Diesel against the Heartbreak Kid when it was Shawn Michaels' first title defense as the world champion. Mm. And it was the match where um, Kevin Nash took off someone's leg from the crowd. <laughs> You remember that? Yeah. And Sean used it against him, so they talked about that. God dang it. Mm hmm <laughs> the professor here. You know, professor. I start a sentence off, he finishes it. God dang yeah, it. Yeah, man. God dang it. God dang it, son. You are the professor. A pro professor. God dang it. Yeah, so like, you know, they, they've been doing that and they took a break from it, but now they made it an official series on the network called like Watch Along or something like well, that. Well, Watch Along Pro Wrestling, why I did what I did with the NCAA. Yes. 
all American standout. So mm-hmm. that'll be fun. First episode of Pro <laughs> First episode of Pro Bro Wrestling. We're gonna get down and dirty as to why I did what I did, but yeah, that'll be later. Yeah. Um, next, we're gonna want to talk about some things that's going on on Raw, and it's possibly the most talked about segment right now, and it's the Bobby Lashley and Lana wedding segment. That got everyone buzzing for many different reasons. And Lana is treating the fans. I should have wrote down the quote that she said in her uh, tweet, but she is treating everyone saying that apparently it was like the highest rating yeah. or whatever. Yeah, the highest bro- rating on professor. YouTube or something like that. But another fan counter it by saying, technically, um, I don't know. There was like some counter statement to that. But uh, yeah, but on YouTube, the numbers are up. And apparently Vince was very, very happy with the segment. He sees the YouTube views are up for that. And uh, I believe we can be be seeing more of this kind of like Jerry Springer, old school Attitude Era storyline, more of this kind of stuff in 2020 because Vince sees that it's working. But, you know, he wants to incorporate it into the show where not only that those demographics are being pleased, but the hardcore, like, wrestling, wrestling fans are also being pleased. Mm -hmm. So it's not just going to be Attitude Era from 9 to 11. Yeah. There's going to be little segments where, you know, the storytelling is Um, legit. What, goes heavy into the PJ-13? Yeah, yeah, but I... I, I, if it's... Wait, how long is the show? Two hours. Uh, three. Three. Raw's three? three? Well, leave that third hour... To be racy. Yeah, that's what they always do, right? Yeah. Remember they, back in the day, it was raw, it was they, war. They had the disclaimer, right? And then it was the war zone from yeah. 10 to 11. Do what you gotta do, baby. Reinvent the wheel, baby. Bring it back. Yeah. Um, I enjoy it only because what I get from it is seeing uh, Bobby Lashley's character. Oh, okay. Now yeah. he has a personality. It helps. It helps, yeah. man. It helps. That's why I did what I did with the Bob Backlund gimmick, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. It was going to help, you know? Mm-hmm. Tag teams don't last forever, so mm-hmm. I had to do what I had to do. Sorry, as an old-timer, I have to keep going back to it, but I'm <laughs> proud of those moments. Of course, as you should be. Professor. But a lot of people are mad because, you know, people were expecting Liv Morgan to come out. <laughs> A better way, I guess. They thought she's going to be connected to Bray Wyatt somehow. But she interrupted the wedding and she revealed herself as Lana's formal, a former (laughs) lover, I should say. (laughs) And um, this is going to touch into, this subject's a little touchy because a lot of people out there, you know, uh, in the LGBTQ community felt that it was disrespectful for this lesbian storyline to be a shock value. You know what I mean? Yes. The fact that they revealed it, like, uh, Bobby Lashley was like, I never, like, once, like, been with that woman, and Liv Morgan said, oh, no, 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 Bobby, I wasn't talking about you. So, people believe... Wrestling World, I'm writing about that <laughs> segment as we speak. As we speak. You can see the little writing, whatever. So, you know, people thought that it was actually a two steps back for society to still have, you know, homosexuality be shock value yeah. whereas it where should just been the norm you know but i think i have to kind of quote my last uh one of our guests that we had um paro mm-hmm. i think he said um i can't quote him i think he said perfect example that the only way an lgbt uh, the only way an lgbtq gimmick uh or storyline mm-hmm. the only way an lgbtq storyline would work is if it was with actual lgbtq true people you right know? that's right. the that only makes way sense. that it would work um you can't just release someone like me and then months later put it on finn balor right. because it's going to make dollars you know right it is what it is finn finn is here i'm here you yeah. know because he's he's being pushed he has the machine behind you mm-hmm. when you have the machine behind you uh the people will buy into you you know right. what i mean so right. uh putting it on a handsome guy like that mm-hmm. uh, you know a- ally yeah it's great but i wish it would have been me of so course. i'm writing the uh the article about the lgbtq uh storyline with yeah. Liv morgan my first sentence is uh no not my first sentence but i have to quote dr tom pritchard who was a scout with wwe he said uh since day one, 2002, you know, sometimes in this business, you're going to have to eat shit and like the taste <laughs> of it. And in 2002, I'm like sitting there hungry, like hungry. Yeah. That, that's not going to happen to me. Oh, doc, please, doc. Mm-hmm. 
it happened to me. And yeah. I was prepared for it. Mm. I was prepared for mm. it, you know? Yeah. Dr. Tom prepared me for it. So it is what it is. And it hurts, man. Sure, sure. And I can I, only imagine. It, it doesn't hurt me as much as it did then, you yeah. know? Yeah. Because, you know, you can't heal in a place that hurt you. It mm. is what it is. You just can't heal in a place that hurt you. But hopefully, you know, Sonia Deville can continue to use her platform to inspire people. You right. Know? You have to just keep moving on, you know, mm -hmm. and be vocal, you know. Yeah. Don't, don't be silent. Right. Don't be silent. Right. Still, still be, um, you know, we need more representation, you know. True, true. We need more representation. So you have to just kind of, uh, again, be a content a content creator mm -hmm. like you said but it's got to come from the heart yeah, so you absolutely. just got to keep you just got to keep pushing on but yeah it sucks but yeah in this business you're going to have to learn how to eat shit and like the taste of it yeah yeah well hopefully you know with the storyline that it, it gets to a place where everyone can be happy with the outcome you know not off the top of my head I know I have it written down uh, but how you would really get a LGBTQ storyline over is if you have, for example, Sonny Kiss parading around the ring, you know, mm -hmm. doing this thing, and then you have me sitting in the crowd, and maybe you have me take off a hood and just sneak him right in the jaw, Ooh, you know? Yeah. And then make it like off script type deal, you know? Jericho I mean? style. Yeah, Jericho style. And just say, the only thing I would say is maybe grab a mic and just say that. This place ain't big enough for the both of us, bitch. Mm -hmm. Boom. Mm -hmm. You know? That's mm -hmm. all I need to say and walk yeah. off. Mm -hmm. The story's there. You know? Absolutely. I'm the bully, you know? Yeah. I'm the bully. Yeah. I, I preach block the hate, but I'm being the bully in this situation. Right. right. This place ain't fucking big enough for the both of us, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. That's how That's how you get shit over. That's how I want to see you make your AW debut, man. That's how you do it, man. Yeah. That's how you do it. You... you you sucker that bitch. Mm -hmm. You sucker him in you right in the jaw. Mm -hmm. You know people don't see it coming. People right. do not see it coming. Mm -hmm. You know that's how you that's how you elevate and make stars. Bro. Yeah. And speaking of making stars, there's a chance that Dominic Mysterio might debut this year, 2020. Ray's pushing for it. He's just a kid, damn it. <laughs> He's what 14. He's just a damn kid, Arnold. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, uh, Ray, uh, Ray mentioned in an interview saying, you know, I hope he has his official match this year. And Ray says the only way that he can retire peacefully is if he gets to share the ring with Dominic oh. as a, you know, official WWE superstar. I'm getting goosebumps mm -hmm. just thinking about that. Right. I seriously, it just went all down my neck. Uh, that would be beautiful. And when was the last time that we've seen that done, Professor? What, father and son or yeah. what? Yeah, father and son. You know, the, the first time would probably be off the top of my head, Brett and Stu, right? Like back in the day. Oh, yeah. They had a tag team a long time ago with all the Hart brothers and all that. Black. This was like black and white wrestling. Well, of course, Dust, Dusty Rhodes and Dustin Rhodes, they were together in a tag team in WWF okay. before. Yeah. Dustin came to WCW as the natural, but we got to make sure we get our facts straight because Damian Adams, who we had on the show, yeah, uh, he listens to our podcast. Mm -hmm. And our last episode, we were talking about Batista, and I think I said that Batista started at UPW uh, in California, but he didn't start in UPW. He started mm. at WXW Ooh. in Allentown, Pennsylvania, for uh, for AFA, mm, okay. and then eventually he moved out to UPW in LA, and then made it to. OVW and then eventually the main roster. It gotcha. was John Cena that started at UPW. Mm. So because like <laughs> he corrected me, I said, "Oh, did I say something wrong?" And then he kind of wrote it out. He's yeah. like, "But it's okay though." <laughs> I'm like, uh, well, "All right, well, it's, I mean, I tried the best I can, but yeah. like, yeah, thanks for telling me that. Yeah. You know, seriously, thank yeah. you for telling me that, Damien Adams, coach. Yeah. We want to know this stuff, yeah. you know, if we like make a mistake. Exactly. As wrestling fans, we want to get that stuff cleared up. Exactly. Sometimes I don't have my laptop on me, so like I don't have my notes. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just talking from the head sometimes. Yeah. But I mean, the last that I can recall with like father and son sharing the ring is with Dusty, you know? Well, the father and son sharing the ring with Dominic, Dominic Mysterio and Rey Mysterio. Uh, Dominic Mysterio. Uh, <laughs> these guys are going to be moving. Yeah. But you want to talk about tandem offense, honey? Tandem offense right there, 2020. My question is, though, is he going to wear a mask? What's his ring gear going to look like? Oh. Is he going to carry on the Mysterio legacy? Yeah. Oh. 
And, you know, technically, Rey Mysterio, even though he, I don't think he was um, father and son to the original Rey Mysterio when he called himself Rey Mysterio Jr., is, is Dominic going to play off of that? Is he going to be Rey Mysterio the third? You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, I think he's definitely going to hopefully expose his face, you know, because, you know, everyone knows Dominic. But, yeah, yeah. I'm very curious to see the gear. That's always, yeah. you know, we're fans of the business, so yeah. we want to see what it's going to look like. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, switching to AEW, I just saw this clip on their IGTV, and I thought it was well shot, really cool. I don't know where they're exactly they're going with it, but the main premise of the content is along the lines of, are we still elite? Um, you know, they had flashbacks of um, Cody, Kenny, um, you know, the Young Bucks just being on fire, wanting to revolutionize the sport of wrestling by starting AW. But once, you know, Dynamite kicks in, they're getting their butt whooped. Cody um, lost his match and it's all his head is bloody with the whole, um, who did he wrestle? Uh, when M- MJ uh, F like screwed him over. Mm-hmm. And then they just show the Young Bucks losing to uh, the Lucha Brothers and everything. And they just, uh, a, a montage of them just being defeated. And um, it just, it kind of sets up for the future of 2020. Mm-hmm. Of them just kind of like consoling themselves a yeah. little bit. And, you know, the whole, are we still elite? You know, is this is going to be the year that they actually make their comeback? Mm-hmm. Because, you know, they've, they've been doing favors ever since AEW started. Definitely mm-hmm. helping out the young guys. I know for sure um, the Young Bucks, they, I feel like 9 out of 10, they don't like it when they go over. They always want other tag teams to go over them mm. just to build up more stars. Yes. But maybe this year is the year that they actually, you know, win a few matches. Yeah. But we'll see. Yeah, why not? I mean, they're, they're well-deserving, but uh, I like the way they think, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I said it. About Ray Jazz. I'm going to get my shit in, Mm -hmm. but I mean, I don't mind highlighting someone, putting someone over Mm -hmm. if I have to. Yeah. You know, I'm, I I can honestly say that when anytime we would be planning matches and and it'd be tags or six mans and no one wants to take the pin, I'm like, guys, I'm going to get my shit in. Yeah. Fuck. (laughs) Let's get. I'll take the I'll I'll look up at the stars. I, I want to just get back to the hotel. Yeah. I want to get back on the road. You know, I don't want to sit here arguing. You're right, right, right. These are grown men acting like bitches. Mm. <laughs> and I'm saying it. These are yeah. grown men acting like bitches. Yeah. Uh, but in spite of that, there's good news. Uh, Charlotte and Andrade engaged. I saw that, man. That's great. Uh, right. As long as they're happy, that's all that matters. Yeah. That's very important. I'm glad to see that, you know? Mm-hmm. I'm glad to see that. And, you know, shit, more stories can come out of that. Sure, you know? uh, sure. Becky and uh, Seth, you know, why not? I think Becky and Seth is a story that made people feel like, okay, we shouldn't do this because of Becky and Seth. Uh, that's really like, no, no, no one enjoyed that. <laughs> no one enjoyed that, man. People enjoyed it when it was behind cameras because that was cool like oh they're really together yeah. and they're both killing it in their separate lanes yeah. but with all this like mixed tag team against Baron and Lacey Evans like no like it was it felt so forced you know we're on the street uh, I fe- uh, I heard Stephanie is looking to tell uh, AJ Lee that she should come back or something like that or TMZ know. asked her about it uh, TMZ asked Steph yeah I think that she was like leaving the airport or something like that wait a second Really? No, it's got to because they fly private, so it can't be at the airport. Probably not in the airport, but they they caught her um, leaving a building, building and they okay. asked like, "Oh, what are the thoughts of like AJ Lee?" He's like, "Oh, like yeah, like um, the more the merrier." She she said the thing along the lines of like the doors open for her, but she at the same time she did the politically correct answer, saying like, "But at the same time, our roster is intact." And it's, you know, we have a lot of great talents that we also want to focus on. So it was it was yeah. a good answer. Yeah, that's what. Uh... What do you think about Brandy? <laughs> <laughs> Does that answer sound familiar to you? <laughs> uh, happy holidays. Probably the next episode, we're going to have two new mics too. So yeah, yeah. like, I can't wait. Sorry to just sidetrack, uh, sidetrack you on that. No, uh, you're good. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I was laughing into this mic. It's yeah, okay. you took the words right out of my mouth, yeah, man. Yeah. This guy knows me better than anybody. <laughs> Shit. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, everyone would love to see AJ, uh, AJ Lee back, you know? Yeah, you know, I've seen her doing a lot more um, posts and videos on her Twitter about mental health. Mental yes, health issues yes. is such a, um, you know, a topic that a lot of people don't like to discuss, you know? I think her book's called Crazy is My Superpower. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, AJ and I got signed the same day, mm -hmm, May mm -hmm. 4th, 2009. She was crying her eyes out. She was probably at the time living out of her car. Well, she's a hardcore wrestling fan. There's a hardcore. picture of her being a teenager taking a picture with Lita. Mm -hmm. She was bawling her eyes bawling out her then. Eyes out, yeah. But, you know, I think right now, um, AJ, I think she's getting into bodybuilding because I saw a recent pic of her. Yes, and we she's talked like, about it, yeah. yeah. We'll see, man. So when she comes back, a new look, that'd be cool. Yeah, dominating. And yeah. hopefully, it, it would be AJ Lee mm -hmm. against Sasha. I want to see that. Yeah. I definitely want to see that. But, I mean, that can go with any of them, you know? Yeah. You, you you throw Trish into the mix, you know, oh, on like yeah. a special occasion, like, oh, yeah. I'm just, I'm like a straight guy by himself, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Ooh. I, you know, this wasn't actually on my list, but I do want to talk about this. I love the Lacey Evans and Sasha storyline. Oh, so yeah. Lacey Evans turning face makes total sense to me. Of course she should be face, man. Like yeah. she's serving the military, yeah. yeah. hardworking woman, former yeah. bodybuilder, takes care of her family. Yeah. Such a role model, you sure. know? So you want that in a positive light. And the fact that Sasha is kind of, you know, stepping over the line and rubbing, uh, uh, getting into the daughter's face and mm -hmm. everything like that. I feel like a lot of people can relate to that. Mm -hmm. People can relate to Lacey Evans being pissed about that. Yeah, but I'm glad the way, you know, she came in as a heel. Yes. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, you serve for the military and you come in as a baby face. Sometimes people don't want to cheer that, man. Like Kurt Angle, yeah, like the gold medalist. People don't want to cheer that. So it's good to come in as a heel. And then eventually people start to like the heel. Mm -hmm. And then eventually the heel slowly becomes a baby face or the people can just change you. you know? Yes, yes. You know, people, the, the, the fans change you. And, um... Yeah, I love it. I yeah, love it. that's the best. I feel like that's the best character building because that's how Stone Cold became so popular, mm -hmm. you know, and it just have, has to happen organically. And like you said, especially people with uh, major life accomplishments. Mm -hmm. I tell you, Lacey Evans, uh, the last time I seen her, uh, well, I seen her several times, but it was the the premiere of SmackDown on Fox. You know, I was backstage mm -hmm. at the Staples Center and I don't think she was doing anything at the time, but yeah. uh, we were just talking and she had me cracking up laughing. She was like, see, see you're laughing because you, you probably think I'm going to imitate her. But her I... Her southern accent. Yeah, <laughs> but she's like, uh, you know, I don't know how people can just, you know, rent a hotel room for for two hours and stuff like that. I'll sleep in my car, you know. I got kids. Why am I going to spend that money? Sure. You know, why am I going to spend that money, $100 on a hotel room? I'll sleep in my car. You know, I serve for the military. Yeah. And she's just like, I'm just cracking up backstage, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and she keeps going on and on. And then immediately, like, we weren't following each other. We started following each other. Like, it was like yeah. a little... A bonding Yeah, moment. not a bromance, but what would you call... I'd have to look it up. Uh... Uh, like like Hart's friend Vincent, you know? A, an acquaintance? No, I'm more than an acquaintance. I just like, you guys vibed a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, I mean, it was really cool. I was trying to find the right, uh, the right uh, cool catchphrase for the both of us, you know? <laughs> Gay guy, uh, a straight woman, you know? <laughs> but you know... Um... She, she's like what they call a fag hag. She oh, she's okay. a fag hack. She okay. she oh she loves the gays. She <laughs> loves the gays. You know she supports him and yeah. all that stuff. So that's what she is. But she's awesome. That's cool, man. But my my um my memory was with, with her was at Bakersfield when she just had her uh almost like a no DQ match with Natalia. Yes, yes. And then you know she had she put on an incredible performance and then she goes to the back. And she passed by you, and in her southern accent, she was just kind of like, "Was that good?" Yeah, you know. <laughs> she yeah, passed man. by. Yeah, you know? so like, yeah, that's cool. You remember that? I don't yeah. remember that, but yeah, it's just like it's always the ones um, that are the, the stars that mm -hmm. you know that they'll, they'll come up to me and they'll ask me for a little advice or oh, yeah. what did you think? And mm -hmm. I'm just like, oh shit, mm -hmm. it was great, you know. You know what you're doing, <laughs> but yeah, to get that uh, approval and all that yeah. stuff is really cool. Yeah. Um, before we get into your match, I want to talk about two more things. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryback had a very fun idea of what could possibly happen at WrestleMania 36. <laughs> Did you hear about this? No. 
No. So he's thinking instead of Taker versus Thing, he's thinking maybe it makes more sense if it's a tag and Taker with Sting against another tag team, whatever tag team that might be, because it's a little risky for Sting to have a full match right now, ever since, you know, ever since what happened with Seth Rollins. So this way, if they have a tag match, Sting can have his last match and maybe win at WrestleMania. And I think it's Sting gets a pass for you know winning his last match, and Taker can do most of the work in there because you know Taker I feel is a right now at this point maybe a better worker than Sting, so you know it's not that bad. It's not a bad idea. Oh, that's what Ryback said. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Taker and Sting, I think they can go one on one just fine. It's not mm -hmm. like Taker and Goldberg. Sure. You know, where Goldberg shoots his load and, like, he's out of it, he's concussed or whatever, and he's just, like, the match is off, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. I've never seen, I've just seen highlights of Taker's face. <laughs> oh, dude. You know, like, that, that footage scares me because it looked like a disappointed dad. Uh, it's yeah. so scary. Yeah, like, yeah. oh, man, you do not want to see that look on you Taker. You don't want to see that. If Undertaker were to come in this room, mm -hmm. people are like, oh, Absolutely. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Yeah, and then he's like, no, guys, sit down. Sit down, you know? Yeah. Please, please. And everyone's running up to him. He's the godfather. He is. He, he really is. He's, man, he's been around since 1990. Yeah, and, and he's so laid back backstage. He's just like... Uh, like Titus comes in and Titus is loud. Like we bust in his locker room, you know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. I have to go because yeah. we're tag team, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And we always, it's always the same, it's always the same with Titus. Titus will barge in and I'm like, hold on big man. It's always like, I mean, it's always set up, you know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Titus can go in there and he's like, hey Taker, you got any snacks over there? <laughs> you know? And Taker's a, type of guy he's like oh take what you want man take what you want you know enjoy yeah. yourself like he's just very like cool Laid calm, collected yeah mm -hmm. that scenario didn't happen but that's just how the demeanor is yeah with Taker. he's very calm cool and collected you know yeah that's so, really cool um yeah but i think taker and stain can go at it man i, I want to see it. it i think stain can do a scorpion death lock the stinger splash the death drop yeah. i think he can get all that stuff in mm -hmm. and in between that they just Punch and kick, man. Yeah. Just fight. Fight. Well, I know Sting still wants to. Yeah. It's still in the back of his mind. Like, maybe, like, one more match. I can do they, one more match. They don't need to do no flips. You know what I no, mean? Sure, they don't sure. need to do no flips. Sure. Take her back and forth. Take her hits him with the tombstone. Kicks out eventually. Whatever. I don't yeah. know. I don't, that I don't know yeah. what happened. You know, <laughs> you want both guys to win, obviously. True, but true. someone's got to lose, you know? True. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is a potential. Uh, tag team match at Royal Rumble, possibly the revival versus the Harlem Heat. Oh, okay, amazing! I love it. Yeah, I love it because what happened on uh, that one show? Did they get called out? Something about uh, Booker T and the revival going back, like you know, uh, going back and forth at the TLC kickoff show. Yes, yes. So I've that seen, could be the I've setup for it. So I, I'm I'm here for it, man. And it'd be nice for Stevie Ray to get. A WWE match in there, you exactly, know? Exactly, exactly. I love, I love hearing that. So mm -hmm. hopefully it's a go, and that's going to be at the Royal Rumble, maybe. Possibly. These yeah. are just rumors right wow. now. Well, they got to get rocking and rolling with that now. If they yeah. aren't already, they will. I watch. Come next Monday, mm -hmm. something will will come about that. That's interesting. Yeah. I know. You know. I know Booker. He's always been one of my favorites. You know. So. So to see them, and I'd always watch them WCW Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Sure. Uh, Wait, that's it. Yeah, that's it, right? Saturday Night yep. Live. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'd always see them. And, and they wrestled. Harlem Heat wrestled in 2019 in Booker T's Reality of Wrestling. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. I and think... he had Booker had his OG Harlem Heat outfit on. Oh, really? Wow. And the entrance with the flames and everything. Ah, yeah. He's one of my favorites, man. Mm -hmm. He's one of my favorites, Booker T, when it comes to ring work and just everything. Yeah. Everything. He can walk the walk and definitely talk the talk. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, man. Well, enough about wrestling. Let's get more into your match, man. Yeah, it's time to kind of break down the match between Ray Jazz and I. We're going to do kind of play-by-play. -play, yeah. Know, why I did what I did. So, yeah, let's get right into it, baby. Yeah, so what you saw was the, um, the highlight that my really good friend Drew Chimnick, he's an editor, producer, director uh, out in New Jersey. He's actually going to be moving to L.A. So, um, mm. 
he was able to create this video for me. He didn't create this actual video, but he created the video that is on my uh, IG mm. IG story, yeah. uh, IG TV mm -hmm. highlights of Ray Jazz and I. Mm -hmm. But this is the actual full match. I love it, man. Get your pose in there. Get my pose in, and right now we're telling the story. These are moments that we're planning. We're yeah. not, we're not jumping a gun or anything. Mm -hmm. We're face to face. We're ready to go. As soon as I hit that curtain, man. Yeah. It's showtime. It's what are you saying to him there? Uh, I'm just saying it's gonna be a long fucking night for you. Mm. We're gonna go in close to 30 minutes. Yeah. So be ready to go. Right. Be ready to go. I'm, I'm, I'm talking shit, man. <laughs> it's serious, man. And the, the fans are into it, man. The fans, right off the bat. Right off the bat. We don't got to do much. He's a wrestler. Yeah. NCAA All-American look. Right mm. off the bat. Right off the bat. It's going to be competitive. Yeah. I'm speechless. This is going to be something that is worth history. Oh. He's using that amateur wrestling. He's, right. He's holding the center. Mm -hmm. I'm having him hold the center. Mm -hmm. I'm letting him know that he's boss, and it's going to be a long night for me. Yeah. Not for him, because right. he wants to end it in five minutes. Mm -hmm. This is almost like the Shawn Michaels, Kurt Angle story, where you're the Shawn Michaels, and he's exactly. the Kurt Angle. Exactly. And that's, that's, those are the matches that I told him to study, and that's what he did. He yeah. Because there'll be moments where Kurt would pull off um, you know, wrestling moves like that, and Sean would just like get pissed. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah. Look at me right now. I'm trying to regroup. I'm telling that story. I'm trying to think, man, it's going to be a long night for me. Right. What do I need to do? I cannot wrestle him. He's an NCAA All American wrestler. Look, he's right. ready to wrestle. He's in position and everything. Boom. Go for the ankle. Go right for the ankle. There it is. Now we're moving. Wow. Oh. Catch him. Yeah. Boom. Who's holding the There it is. Now? There it is. I'm not moving one bit. Mm -hmm. I always say I'm the black Randy Orton. Yeah. I envision myself being the black Randy Orton. No happy feet. I'm holding the center. Right. No, it's going to be a long night for mm -hmm. you, Ray Jazz. Let that moment simmer, you know? And Arnold, look at the people now. Mm -hmm. People are sitting now. Mm -hmm. You always want to say, you don't want to uh, be nervous. Like, oh, the people aren't reacting. The people are reacting. Mm -hmm. But this is the start of the match. Watch when we end the match. Right. Watch where the people are. Yeah. Everyone will be standing. Everyone will be surrounding the ring. Now we both know where we're coming from. Now. Right. Now we're going to wrestle. Damn. Now you can't shoot your load in five minutes. So right. You gotta tell that story. Yeah. Now he's trying to out wrestle me. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, Damien Adams on the on commentary? Yep, Damien Adams, my coach. He's got cauliflower ear. I'm trying to yank on it. I'm trying to do whatever I got to do to get out of that hole. The point of the wrestling match is to win. I'm trying to win. Right. Whatever it takes. Right. And then we get caught up in the ropes, you know. Mm -hmm. I need... I need my back against the ropes because, mm -hmm. like, if my back is exposed, you know, he can take me down. Yeah. So that's why I work to the corner. Right. That's experience. I mm -hmm. what is going through the mind of Fred Ross Veteran right ring awareness. Yeah. Because he can't attack me because my back is against the rope. Mm -hmm. Ring awareness. Now I'm trying to regroup. I'm trying to catch my breath. Mm -hmm. I'm older. Oh. Oh, that's a Razor Ramon move yeah, right there. Exactly. That taunt. You know, Danny, yeah. you talk a lot about Fred's experience, but Ray actually has the most wins in NYU history. So Ray has a lot of experience in. Shake it off. Shake it off. Yes, exactly. He's showing that right now by, I would say, taking the upper hand early on. But the one thing, see, if you know. This totally gives me the Iron Man feel, man. Exactly, man. Fred, you can see Fred and serve an energy. 
Because you guys are selling headlocks, oh, you know, everything. all these. Everything. Yeah. There's that Rey Mysterio. Yeah. Second rope. Be different, man. Mm -hmm. Be different. Change levels. I mean, you get in there with an NCAA All American. Do you think you're going to try to out grapple him? I'm not. Oh, there it is. The Dynamite Kid. Uh, yell, right? Well, yeah, exactly. The Dynamite Kid yell. Mm -hmm. But what I just delivered with a whoopee cushion. So mm -hmm. I'm just targeting that stomach. Because you punish you punish that stomp you punish that stomach, you knock the wind out of him. Mm -hmm. I don't wait till he gets up. I'm chopping him down. Yeah. I'm working that stomach because when you're winded you can't go. Now we're gonna have a little fun here with the crowd. I got a little stuck there. <laughs> step. There it is. Should he do it? Should he do it? No. Oh! It's gonna be a long night for Ray Jazz. <laughs> His people are going crazy. They're are they on the front row? Yeah, there. They're on this side. They're on that side. My people are sprinkled all over. Mm -hmm. But I was definitely outnumbered. See, I threw the steps. You know, mm. I got, I got a little hot. You know, like yeah. the damn steps. Make it physical, mm -hmm. man. Mm -hmm. People react like, oh shit, this is real. Yeah. Oh. See, you hear that sound? I'm staying on that stomach. Mm -hmm. I'm being physical. Mm -hmm. Wearing them down. Uh oh, I think we're about to slip on a banana peel right now. Ooh. Oh! That's how Triple H got his bruised pecs. Towards Peck, yeah. yeah. Is that a scary bump to take? Uh, I'm just so used to it. Mm. I'm just so used to it. Yeah. Look, I take that, I don't move mm -hmm. one bit. Mm -hmm. You take it, you start flopping around like a fish, the people know you're alive. Yeah. You take that, you don't move mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. This is where I get my energy. Mm -hmm. I get my rest. Mm -hmm. Now, don't fight me on the outside. Right. That might be later. Mm -hmm. Throw me in. Now I'm all yours. Yeah. Exactly. You know, he he wants a better win. Yeah. Like, He's yeah. got something to prove. Yeah. You got to have good strikes. So mm -hmm. Ray's got to work on his strikes. He's mm -hmm. new. He's over a year in this business. Yeah. So he's got to work on his strikes. Mm -hmm. Make him big. Yeah. Ray just looks like he is. He looks like a vulture just stalking his prey, man. Feels like he's got you where he yeah. wants you to be. Yeah, I'm not going nowhere. Oh, that's an amateur move right mm -hmm. there. Now he starts doing his amateur stuff mm -hmm. to me. He starts punishing me. Yeah. See, his people are behind him. Right. Just over a year of training. He's, he's got something there. He's mm -hmm. got to just keep getting those reps. Mm -hmm. When you grab holes, you got to be methodical and really kind of put some snap into it. Right. You know? From there, if I was him... I'd be rolling, rolling me every which mm -hmm. way, pin there right you there, you know, do another one, you know, right, keep right. punishing me, let go of the hole, mm -hmm. you know, punish me with some elbows, stick your elbow inside my uh, ribs, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. punish me, yeah. don't let me get up, once mm -hmm. I get up, I'm Superman, right, you know, so, there it is, there it is, oh, Owen Hart, yeah, and you see that? You yeah. see the cell? Yes. Like a UFC the days, cell. Yeah, the days, like knockdown. Knock, knockout. Yeah. Ricky Steamboat said what helped him sell the most was watching boxing. Mm -hmm. How people would sell a knockout. How their know? body coils and exactly. everything. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the art of the business, you know. Mm -hmm. Everyone can hit, can hit holds, but it's, or hit moves, but it's hitting the moves and then selling. Yeah. Some resistance here by me. Right. Because I don't want to just have him grab me, yeah. but cross face me, punish yeah. me. Make it you know? look like a fight, yeah. you know? And I've got to tell him this backstage, you know? I'm not going to take it personal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have to you have to be physical. You have to put me in uncomfortable situations like mm -hmm. he is right now. Mm -hmm. He's trying to put those shoulders on the yeah. mat. He has, a, he has a half Nelson. He's got the legs locked. These right. are amateur wrestling holes. Yeah. And it's 
it's physical here. Right. It's physical. Right. That's his advantage. I'll tell you what. Oh, wow. He's physical. He's hitting me. I don't think the NCAA condones that. And that race tactic. Shoulder off the mat. Oh. Headbutt. Yep. My hands, I can't, I can't strike mm -hmm. because I'm not in the right position. So I'm a headbutt your ass. Yeah. Do whatever I got to do. Right. We're about to get some magic right here. Mm. Oh, that's nice. Right that there. No. the gum. Yeah, it's just like timing is everything. Mm -hmm. You know, just the littlest things. Yeah, I'm not doing any flippity floppity, right. but something where people don't see it coming. Yeah, you know? that people, always works, man. The mm -hmm. spit. But a lot of people can't do it well. Right. And a lot of people don't do it. Mm -hmm. One of the best people at a visual like that is Goldust. Goldus. Goldus and I would always do it at, on that live events. I would do it because he would do it so well. Sean and Billy, too. They oh, do yeah. it pretty good. Oh, yeah. But uh, Vince doesn't like that. He doesn't like spit. So at TV, <laughs> you can't do that flying, flying out of spit. Bow and arrow. That is outlawed. In Never seen that lock before, man. Yeah, I think Brock did it. Brock did it probably with... He could have done it with Ray. Mm. He could have done it with Eddie Guerrero. But yeah, this is a legit hole that's Jesus. outlawed in high schools, but college it is uh, legal. Yikes! And it's uncomfortable, man. No sure. How you slice it or dice it, it is very uncomfortable. Sure. I told Ray Ray, you've got to put me in situations that are uncomfortable. Yeah. That your fans. That are wrestling uh, fans, amateur wrestling fans right. can relate to. Right. Like, this is pro wrestling, but oh, I remember doing that hold in amateur right. wrestling. I'm biting him right there. There it is. Now. Nice. Right there, I'm biting him, whatever nice. it takes. You couldn't really see it with all the people standing there, right. but I'm biting him to get out of it. Whatever That's different. it takes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you can't hit me like that. You gotta hit, be physical. Right. Watch me. Elbow. You gotta, you gotta be aggressive. Yeah. Man, I'm trying to get out of danger. Right. right. I'm trying to regroup. He snatches me from the apron. German. Watch the cell. Oh, nice. You gotta grab your head like mm -hmm. what's broke. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You just can't take a German and flop like a fish. You gotta sell the point of contact. Right. You know? Right. Damien Adams just had his C3 and C5 repaired in his neck. It takes the most abuse. Right. Now he's toying with me. He could toy with me more. Elbow in the back of the head. Mm -hmm. He's punishing me. Whatever it takes. It's the visual that the people will get. You know? Yeah. And I'll tell you what, see, Ray's doing a good job. He's trying to keep me grounded. That's his key. I'm doing whatever it takes. You know? yeah. I'm trying to get out. I'm trying to get to my feet. Mm -hmm. We're getting warm here now. Mm -hmm. We're getting warm. So you gotta charge me. Ooh. Get in my ass. You gotta punish me. Right? right. If I was Ray Jazz, I'd be European me. I'd be doing all different types of strikes. Yeah. That shot got me. That was a good one. <laughs> Look, see, I'm fighting. Yeah. Giving everything you got, man. Get on me. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Oh, the sweat. The sweat, yeah, man. Sweating like a pig. Here we go. Nice. Just out of nowhere, I took that buckle, flew out of the buckle, and out of nowhere, I just used everything I could. Yeah. Now this is what they call a double down. Mm -hmm. We're both down. Now we're rocking and rolling. Now right. we're now we're Shawn Michaels. Mm -hmm. Shawn Michaels. Shawn and we're Razor. Feeling, we're feeling it. The building's got to be rocking. Yeah. Now I remember what I said earlier. Earlier, the people. Mm -hmm. We're sitting down before. Each strike mm -hmm. here hit me. Mm -hmm. Oh look, pads are coming off now. Watch the strikes. Oh. 
I'm like Rocky Balboa. Mmm, there it is. That's right. Boom. Hockey fight. That's what I call a hockey fight. Yeah. Oh my god. Misdirection. Here we go, baby. Yes. Get up. <laughs> That's your classic suplex, man. Oh, that was a loud one. Yeah, nice. Let it breathe. I love it when they do that. When they go down too. Mm. Sunset. Oh, no. Wow. Oh. And that's when he had the um, the yeah, ropes, right? Yeah. Look at the people. Wow. Me, I stay low. And your block the hate championship was on the line, right? It was on the line. Look, he cheated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He cheated. Look at the people. They're cheering. Mm -hmm. Stay low. Yeah. Let them celebrate. Right. Let them celebrate. Mm -hmm. Now you see Damien Adams, the announcer, the ref. Mm hmm. The one professor at Centenary, mm -hmm. Dave, mm -hmm. he's the uh, special enforcer now. Right. Everyone's regrouping. Stay low, Fred. Stay mm -hmm. low. Mm -hmm. Is that a fan? Yeah. What's he saying to you there? Do you remember? You okay, Darren? Aw. Man, he's got a piece. Jazz is taking a belt now mm -hmm. in the bottom corner. Yep. <laughs> oh, it looks like Ray has been caught. Bret Hart moment. Yep. I come to the center. I'm confused. Mm -hmm. And he's already counting down the ref. Everything went as planned as mm -hmm. I wanted. The story, mm -hmm. story, moments. Look, everyone's up now. Yep, everyone's up. This is special guest enforcer referee for a reason. That's right. This match has been restarted. The match has been restarted. Unbelievable. Now I'm going to punish him. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, oh hardest part of the ring. going on there do you remember it looks like we're chaos right here. he's gonna pay he cheated now he's gonna pay oh this is when you guys went outside the door right yeah. the camera will eventually pan around mm. i flipped the table over i'm just Mmm. Yeah. Watch what is going on. If this was a cordless mic, I would follow it too. Again, I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it PG and everything. Right. You know, nothing too crazy. Right. Boom. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. 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 We we could have definitely That's done sick. more. Look, yeah. Look at all that. Yeah. Look, those are all his people. Mm -hmm. Ray mm -hmm. just told me afterwards that. His people thought like, oh, I think we're going to have to kick his ass. <laughs> Legit. Yeah. That's what he said. This fight has gotten personal. Uh, one friend, Adam Glenn, who we had on. He's right. right there. Oh, cool, man. Taking my time. Taking my time. See, the people are into it. Mm -hmm. you don't need, I don't need to hover him and mm -hmm. beat him up. I just take my time. Yeah. But people are watching. One strike, one punch, one headbutt. You know? Yeah, Rosser has run out of patience. Look, he's grabbing my ear. He's trying to get out of it. Now, I like to get the people involved. Right. Right here, I'm about to get the people involved. Mm. I try to find kids and have him, have him help me out. Right now, I have him in the front face lock. Mm -hmm. I'm holding him. 
because I'm looking for a lucky fan mm -hmm. to come help me just yeah. give him a strike. Mm -hmm. The referee's son. <laughs> here we go. Get it. Oh! Having fun. <laughs> Take a chair. Ooh. I'm doing whatever I got, whatever furniture I can find. I'm just mm -hmm. freestyling here. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. See? That visually looks so good, yeah, man. Visually, just now bring him back in the ring. Now he's finished now. I'm having fun with yeah. him in the ring now. It's, now it's time to put Ray Jazz away. Yeah. I said in the promo videos leading up to this match that I was going to punish you, I was going to wound you, and that's mm -hmm. what I did. I'm raising the roof for the gut check right yeah. here. Not quite yet. Super kick, I'm trying. Oh, no! Boom! Close call. Now, remember what I said. The beginning, everyone was sitting. Yeah, right? look at that. Look, that's what we want. That's amazing. That's when you know that I've done my job. Now it's time to go to the pay window. That's amazing. You couldn't beat me with that. I'm dead right there. Mm -hmm. I kicked out last second. What else can you do, Ray Jones? Mm -hmm. What else can you do? That was one of his finishers. Yeah. You know? The head, the leg and arm, mm -hmm. and just plant me. Yeah. Now, you know, this isn't a smart move right here. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. he's an amateur wrestler. It's a high risk. High risk. He's going for that moonsault. And I'm just looking at people. Yeah. Nice. Just like that. Oh, grab that rope. Get on him. Boom. Gut check time. And there it is. There it is. And look, pe people are happy. Yeah. So whether it's uh, in front of a couple hundred people or 10,000 people, you know, it would still get the same reaction. Yeah, you know, man. Big or small. Mm -hmm. People into it. Mm -hmm. And like, again, like someone being new, they might say, oh, in the beginning of the match, people aren't cheering. Like, oh, so then... That means that that gives them the right to like do all the flips and stuff like that because that's what the people want. No, right. if I have 25, 30 minutes, slow and steady wins the race. Yeah. So the beginning of the match, Ray Jazz holds the ring. This right. is amateur wrestling. Right. I can't amateur wrestling, so then that's when I gotta, as a baby face, I gotta take some cheap shots. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And then I hold the center of the ring. Yeah. Right? And then that's when we sh share, uh, set the story. Yeah. We set the story, and yeah, I mean. Like, first time on Pro Bowl Wrestling, we kind of went through why I did what I did. Uh, and again, at the end of the day, we're the best storytellers in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I did the match. I literally sacrificed a trip to Singapore yeah. to wrestle out there in Singapore yeah. to do this match to highlight Ray Jazz. And I'm glad we were able, first episode of 2020, to kind of go through the match and talk about, again, why I did what I did. That was a picture-perfect match from top to bottom. And... Uh, that was really cool how you broke it down like that psychologically. And to me, just as important as the match, what I thought was cool was, um, you know, all those behind the scenes footage of you going into oh. the building with your suit and everything yeah. and him going down. I think he was wearing like a track outfit or yeah. whatever, but just it just <laughs> set up for um, the big night that was coming ahead, you know, exactly. and everyone um, cheering for you as you're passing by yeah. you know it, i think that adds so much more to the story and elevates the match as well dude if i'm gonna sacrifice a trip you know yeah. i'm gonna make sure i have good content right that i can share forever mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. and good content that can help me maybe possibly wrestle at other schools yeah. i mean centenary university wants to do it again in mm -hmm. 2020 you know oh, yeah. so not only that school i want to do other schools right you know? i right. want to be able to be able to do and share the same stories. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. yeah, man, we'll see. But I'm glad here on Pro Bowl Wrestling we were able to kind of dissect that match that I'll show to any any person I'm training yeah. or any student of mine that I'm looking to help elevate. Mm -hmm. And 
hopefully, you know, Ray Jazz can uh, finally, you know, because we, we haven't been in contact uh, mm. really since uh, right. since the match. So mm. he can see from the episode as yeah. to why, you know, we did what we did, you know, right. and the story that we told. Yeah. It's an amazing story. And thank you for doing that for this episode. It was a lot of fun breaking it down, man. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a wrap for the first episode of 2020. You know, we got to go over your amazing match, you know, close up 2019. And what? who's to say what's going to happen this year, man? A new decade. Well, technically, you know, people are going to be like, uh, new decade starts in 2021. But I don't want to hear oh, that. Goodness. I don't want to hear that. Start now. You yeah. Know? And a lot of talk with me and uh, the, the the keto talk mm -hmm. and the CBD movement is going to be running wild on my social media. So definitely at Real Fred Ross or make sure you follow what's going on, you know, because I'm making major moves. I know you're making major moves, Arnold. <laughs> and thank you guys for letting us do this. We, you know, we do this mostly because we're, we're wrestling fans, yes. you know, and it gives us just a chance to sit down for an hour, like two hours and just talk about what we love and just bond over something that's super uh, passionate uh, for the both of us, you know? Uh, so thank you guys for watching and listening. And if you guys are watching us on YouTube, make sure you guys subscribe and give us a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment down in the comment section below. And if you're listening to us on iTunes, make sure you guys give us a five-star rating if you like what you hear and give us a review as well. And happy new year if I haven't said that yet. Yeah. And until then... That's a wrap, Jack. Block the hate, salute the great. <laughs>